Pete, this gets off right away, straight wire. I was told I could probably get a room here. Yes, sir. We don't have so many American tourists like before. Now it is always refugees. Things have a way of changing. Can I send a cable from here? Yes, sir. I will send. Thank you. thousand miles from Philadelphia to Macau. In getting there, it gives a man a lot of time to think. You don't bother to answer any questions about yourself. Maybe because you figure you know all the answers. Or maybe it's because you don't know the answers. The real answers. But you can't help wondering about the others. What brought them here? What keeps them here? And what are they going to do to wind up with before they leave? With me, it was simple. What brought me here? $10,000. What was going to keep me here? A woman. But only until I found her. And what was I going to wind up with? Another 20000 When I got her back to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. To Barney Pendleton's office. Barney Pendleton and the city of brotherly love. What a combination. He couldn't say hello to you on a Sunday morning without making it sound like drop dead. Come in. A wire from Eddie Darrell. We were wrong about the date being in Hong Kong. She's in Macau. Barney, do you still think he'll be able to get her back here? He's the only man in the world who can. She's in love with him. With him, she'd walk in front of trains. You ought to know that I'm not in the habit of tossing $30,000 into a game that I'm not sure of. Maybe, but you've already given him 10 of it. And it might be worth it for him to keep that and stay over there. In case it turns out, he's still in love with her. That's why I sent Cliff. There won't be any double cross. Trent, you're open news service? Yes, sir. I wonder if you can give me a little information. I'm tracking down a story that broke out of your Hong Kong office about three weeks ago. I'll try, sir. It had to do with a woman named Christine Lawrence. Do you know anything about it? Miss Christine Lawrence, yes, I vaguely remember the story. I understand she's living in Macau and I'm trying to locate her. Would you happen to have her address? May I ask who's calling? My name is Darrow, Eddie Darrow, the Seattle Herald. I see, I'm sorry, Mr. Darrow, but I'm afraid we haven't too much on Miss Lawrence in our files. However, she's been seen on and off at the Lisbon Club. You might try down there. The Lisbon Club? That's right, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>
Come on. Oh, you all right, boss? I pay you to prevent things like this, Sam. Where were you and Leon? Oh, you didn't tell us what time you were going to get here. All right, never mind that. Get rid of this crowd. Tell them it was political, an attempted holdup, anything not connected with me or the club. Leon, go get Dr. Singh, fast. Okay, boss. The doctor close by. He'll be right up. Is it bad? Yeah, tore my jacket. You come out all right? Thanks to you, yes. You know, you're a pretty fair street fighter. I've been in training ever since I learned to walk. This seems to be a style in this neighborhood. Wear it. Looks good on you. Come on, we'll get inside and get you patched up. Until a few minutes ago, it was mine. Now I owe it and everything else I have to you. It's not as bad as all that, is it? Yes, it is. One of my good qualities, and I don't have many, is that never in my life have I let a debt go unpaid. And I never will. Oh, the doctor. I'd rather not discuss what happened in front of him. Sure. Everything all right, doctor? It is a clean wound, Mr. Keat. There should be no complications, but I must look at it again in two days. I'll see that the patient is available. Is there pain? No, not much. That is good. We need no sling. Thank you, doctor. It is customary that I send you a statement. No statements this time and no report. As you wish. Thank you, Mr. Keat. Good evening. Good night. Good evening. How do you know he'll keep his word? He will if he intends to stay in Macau. I better remember you in case I get a parking ticket. <laughs> Come on, we'll find your shirt and tie. Now that the crisis has passed, we can get around to the niceties, like introducing ourselves. My name is Darrow, Eddie Darrow. What goes with Keith? Justin. Sounds English. Citizen of the world. You're new to Macau, Eddie. Does it show? People are my hobby. It's quite a hobby. A lot of people in Macau. You know them all? Only those who are worth knowing. As a matter of fact, maybe you can help me, Justin. I'm looking for a woman who I hear comes to your club quite frequently. Her name is uh, Christine Lawrence. Here, try this one. I'll see what I can do about locating her for you. Friend of yours? Well, it's stretching at a point. We've met. That you've come all the way to Macau to find her? I came all the way to Macau to see Macau. She happens to be here, so I thought I'd look her up. Mr. Keith? Yes, yeah, Sam? Can I see you for a minute? Sure. Found a tie in the closet. Clean and patched up. Well? The police were here. I told them it must have been a robbery attempt. I think they believe me. They asked for me? No. They see my car. I moved it before they got here. Get it repaired as fast as you can. I want you to handle the place tonight. I won't be here. Now, you're sure that you've taken care of everything? Everything's cleared up. Keep it that way. Well, I've just taken the night off. You and I are going to my house for a couple of drinks, and we'll let the rest of the evening develop as it will. That is, if you feel up to it. Sure. I'm just wondering if you're safe to be seen with. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm usually not the target. Most Chinese are better losers than that pair. So that was behind it, huh? A gambling loss. I can't think of anything else. By the way, where are you staying? Someone with a sense of humor named at the palace. The palace? <laughs> we'll have to do better than that. What's the matter? Nothing. I guess somebody else needed that gun more than I did. Stolen right out of this office? If you want to keep this murder attempt under wraps, you better find it. Because if it's registered to one of those gunmen and the police stumble across it, they'll have a lead. I hadn't thought of that. I think you did. <laughs> Come on. Thank 
Couldn't you do any better than this? Well, things have been a little tough lately. Bar's <laughs> right through there. I'll be back in a minute. enough that you're free for the evening. What else is there? Well, somebody I bumped into. I'm sorry, dear. I meant it to be a surprise, but not a shock like this. Eddie, my fiance, Christine Lawrence. Eddie, I... I'm not being very fair to either of you, especially you, Eddie. Chris has told me all about you and all the rest of the past we've agreed to forget. It's just that I can't... What are you doing here, Eddie? I didn't know till now. But I came to congratulate you. I mean in the car. I had a little trouble in the States. I figured it'd be healthy if I got out for a while. I heard living was cheap here, so here I am. It's good to see you again, Eddie. It's good to see you. Well, if you... if you don't have any more surprises, I'll make some drinks. Eddie's the best I could do for tonight. What do you have? Bourbon? Bourbon or scotch, it doesn't make any difference. You see, I'm doubly indebted to you. For saving my life, but more important, for not marrying Chris. I had little to do with that, believe me. Oh? Whatever there was between us is gone, forgotten. But she must have told you a whole life story if she got around to me. An unfortunate story. I hope to improve it from now on. Thank you, dear. Now, if you'll excuse me. Aren't you having one? Oh, uh, not tonight, dear. I I'm going to my room. Why, Chris, you've got to stay. You and Eddie must have a lot to talk about. Justin, we agreed to forget the past. So there's nothing to talk about. But it was nice seeing you again, Eddie. You'll be seeing a good deal more of him, darling. I've made arrangements for him to be my house guest. How nice. In that case, I'll see you at breakfast. Good night, Justin. Good night, dear. Why are you doing this? Eddie, I'm indebted to you. Surely there's nothing wrong with offering you my hospitality. Ordinarily, no. If you're afraid I'm going to go to the police with that story about the shooting, you're wrong. I don't care about it, and it's none of my business. Fine. Now let's drink up. We'll change our clothes, and I'll show you Macau. We'll start with my club, naturally. It's the best place in town. This is Mr. Alan Chung, Yale 35, scholar, philosopher, and the finest man at the piano in this part of the world. This is Mr. Eddie Darrow, just arrived from Philadelphia. Mr. Darrow, Mr. Chung, a couple other people I'd like you to meet. Hello, Mr. Keith. Hello, Sue. Hello. This is Sue Lee, one of our major attractions. I can understand that. This is Mr. Eddie Darrow. I saw him when you came in. He's handsome. Does this go with every pack? Why don't you try buying some? Maybe it's just your money she's after. Thank you, Mr. Darrell. Thank you. You see that bald-headed man over there? I just heard him say he ran out of cigarettes. I think I like you very much. Will you come back? Oh, yes, I'll be around. But I think you better go and sell your cigarettes. Where did she go to school? Nightclubs? <clears throat> no, hers is a natural talent. There seems to be a lot of talent in this room, too. What do you mean? 
If you look inside the bottom of that dealer's coat, I think you'll find a bill that didn't quite make the money box. Well, he's been with me almost two years. Look for him to retire on his savings any day now. However, if you don't care, I certainly... Oh, wait a minute. Leon, I'm going to ask Charlie to step over here just a minute, please. retired. Uh oh. Is there another way out of here? So far, you seem to be unsure of yourself in only one department, fighting to protect your honor. It's international relations I'm fighting to protect. A doll like that is going to have at least a half a dozen very jealous boyfriends. Best evenings I've had in a long time, Eddie. You're good company. Good host makes that easy. Thanks. See you at breakfast. Have a good sleep. Thank you. Good night. Good night. years and not tell me why. I've got to know. I told you I had some trouble. I thought if I looked you up, you might introduce me to some of your influential friends. Is that the only reason? What else? I've been in there telling myself a story about how you finally found out where I was and came to me. You did all sorts of romantic things, working on tram steamers. That's quite a story for somebody who walked out on me to marry another man. Shh. I'll tell you about that. I'm not interested. But you made a great parlay, didn't you? Danny made it to Justin Keat. That's not fair. You don't know Justin. I've got a good imagination. Too good. You remember friends were scarce after Danny was killed. I waited a long time for my phone to ring. Oh, Eddie, they tried to kill me, too. All I could do was run. When I got here, I was broke and sick. Through a doctor, I met Justin. He was wonderful to me. Stood by me until I got well. And since then, you've been his house guest. Yes. His house guest. How much do you know about his business? He runs a very successful club, you know that. There must be more. You seem to have an uncanny knack for picking prime targets. A couple of local guns tried to get him earlier tonight. I don't believe you. I was there. I had to play hero and save his life. Justin would have said something. You and your husbands and your fiancés and me. We really get tangled up, don't we? I guess people ask for everything they get. I'm not complaining. Private bath, silk sheets, a room with a view. What else could anybody want? Eddie, don't do this to me. Don't stay in this house. And Eddie, I won't hurt Justin. He's good and decent. And he's a gentleman. A gentleman. Right down the line. Right down the line. And you're happy about the idea of marrying him. And I'm happy about the idea. Good night, Eddie. All right, sleep well? Like a log. Chris sends her apologies. She's feeling a bit out of sorts. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope it's nothing serious. Troublesome, but hardly serious. 
By the way, Eddie, it's not your fault, of course, you didn't know. But I make it practice to leave my business problems at the office. Running a nightclub can be lucrative, however, it has its disadvantages. I try to spare Chris the sort of details. I made a mistake. We started talking about old times and current events crept in. It won't happen again. It won't happen again. You know, I've been thinking about last night. What part? It was a pretty big one. <laughs> well, particularly about your tabbing that uh, dealer for what he was. I don't know what your financial condition is, but I'd like to offer you a job. I'd like you to be at the club every night, like a customer. Keep an eye on things. Are you serious? We both stand to gain. You can help me, and I think you'll find the money attractive. You're wondering why I'm doing this, and I'll tell you. When a man finally finds a woman that he wants to marry, he's automatically convinced that he's the only man in her life, past or present. To me, it has to be that way. I've got to be sure of Chris. Does that satisfy you? Couldn't it be that you want me around where you can keep an eye on me? For the record, I want you around because you're so perceptive. All right, I'll take it, but on the one condition. What's that? Help me find an apartment. Oh, what's the matter with this place? Nothing, but I'm the kind of a guy that likes to run around in his shorts. life on your own time. I don't hate life, my friend. I simply consider it, quote, an unpleasant interruption to an otherwise blissful non-existence, unquote. Schopenhauer. Every time I've come in, last night and tonight, you've gone into that tragic melody. How come? To see if you would ask why. You win, I just did. It occurred to me last evening that since you started to work here three weeks ago, we have been denied the pleasure of a single visit by Miss Lawrence. Before that, she used to come in quite often. So I've decided that your presence and her absence are juxtaposed. Don't go psychic on me, Alan, and uh, learn a new piece. be my favorite melody. That's strange. It happens to be Miss Lawrence's favorite, too. She taught it to me. Go back to the sad stuff. Hello, Eddie. Well, what's the occasion? Maid's night out? <laughs> Something like that. Care to join us? I'd like to, but somebody has to keep an eye on things. Yeah, you see what I mean? I've been telling Chris how good you are for the place. Relax a while. Sit down and have a glass of champagne, at least. How's it been going tonight? Okay. Good. Private stock. I was right. It is something special. Very special, Eddie. Think hard. Okay, ring the bell. You've got me. It's Chris's birthday. I thought you knew. I'm sorry. I have a bad memory for dates. Happy birthday. Just a minute. Happy birthday, darling. Justin, really, there was no reason to... If it brings you a fraction of the happiness you've given me, it's all the reason I need. It's lovely, Justin. I repeat, happy birthday. Your drink, sir. You have good taste. She can get my vote. Don't waste it, sir. Don't even register. The lady's engaged. Yeah? The gent on her left, Mr. Keat. The owner, huh? Well, that tears it. Beg your pardon? Nothing. Give me a pad and pencil. Can I phone in a cable from here? I think so. The phones are over there.
I'd like to propose another toast. To Chris, who gave me life, and to Eddie, who saved it. Two very important people. thing is luck, Chris. Simply a matter of mathematics. Fortunately, the odds are on our side. Always? For a period of time, yes. Not I'd get out of the business. The fact of the matter is, I'm really a very poor loser. I wouldn't have thought that money was that important to you. Money in itself, isn't it? Mr. Keith. Oh, excuse me. You try to amuse yourself, Chris. I won't be long. Sorted wolves out there. You're over 21. That's what the wolves kept telling me. Well, trying to match your dialogue with your jewelry. Look, can't we just be two people sitting here having a drink? Sorry, I just finished mine. This is just what I expected. Get away from me, Chris. Love is such a curious thing. You love, you hate. You hate, you love. What separates the two? A strand of hair. A push this way or that. In this case, merely finishing a drink. Don't fight it, my friend. I can do for you? My business is with Mr. Keith. I'm his personal secretary. I must see Mr. Keith. You still want to go up or have you forgotten what you wanted to say? This is getting to be a habit. Any connection? Only if you're interested in the various characteristics of gamblers. Some, like Mr. Han Fai, accept calamity with grace. He asked me to approve his credit so he could play some more. Others die very hard. That's still all there is to it, huh? That's all there is to it. Suit yourself. It's your neck. Eddie. You worked so hard at being a heel, then with one impulsive act you destroy the entire illusion. All right, then why did you stop the gunman? Just look the other way and no more problem. Who is he, Alan? What's this all about? Look the other way, my friend. 
pry into cause and with another meaning. To learn too much is dangerous. A man who just got his credit approved, he isn't staying very long. That's right. Never mind. Find Chris and drive her home. Sparing the most sordid details. They said drive her home. My car's in the alleyway. Stay with him till I phone. Sam! What is it? What happened? Come on, I'm taking you home. Oh. It's not my idea, it's Justin's. Come on, we'll go out the back way. Get inside in the office. But what happened? A gunman tried to get into Justin's office. And a man is with him is waylaid by the same gunman. You still think you're marrying a gentleman? If he sold shoes around a lending library, things like this wouldn't happen, but he doesn't. In his business, you have to expect things like this. Coming in? He said he wants me to wait until he phones. I'll wait out here. There's no reason to do that. Do you want a drink? I could use one. nice of you to remember. Is that better? The room isn't quite as glary. Please, Eddie, don't be unpleasant. I'm always unpleasant when you're mixed up with somebody you shouldn't be. The last time I was unpleasant, you were marrying Danny Maynard. I should have learned my lesson. Like you said, people usually get what they ask for. You were the one who asked for it. Quick money, that's all you could think of when you got back from overseas. You helped me spend it for a while. Not until I'd tried every way I knew to keep you away from your friends. That sounds great coming from you. Yes, I know. I was just as mixed up and weak as you were. Both of us were looking for an easy way out of a life we weren't satisfied with. Marrying Danny was the easiest way out of an unpleasant situation. Something I missed? Just this. You introduced me to Danny. He liked what he met and he decided he was going to marry it. He decided he was going to marry me, he said, even if he had to kill you to do it. And you believed him? Wouldn't you have? And after he was dead, why didn't you come to me then? They tried to kill me because I knew too much about Danny's business. I would have put you on the same spot. It was easier to run. Look, Eddie, there's no place to put the blame. It just happened to be two people who fell in love at the wrong time in the wrong place. Landed in the middle of all the wrong people. And things haven't changed a bit. I better go.
Hello? Hello, dear. Oh, yes, Justin. Took you so long to answer, I was worried. I'm sorry, I... I was on the terrace. Oh. Is Eddie there? No, he... He started back. Well, that's odd. He was supposed to wait until I phoned. I, I guess he misunderstood. He... He left just a few minutes ago. I see. All right, I'll be along a little while. All right, Justin. I was to wait for his call. I didn't remember. We're back answering the hymn. Oh, Eddie, I don't know. I don't know. Eddie. Hmm? Tell me one thing. Did you forget it was my birthday? There isn't one thing about you that I've ever forgotten. Everything all right, Eddie? Don't know why it shouldn't be. Just wondering. I thought you were going to wait for me to phone you. Well, why didn't you? I didn't. You'd left. Well, if there's ever a next time, don't wait so long. See you tomorrow. Well? Well, what? How did the assault and battery turn out? From what I gathered, this from disinterested bystanders, I might add. Two thugs robbed a gentleman named Han Fai of a considerable amount of money. Yet this same Han Fai, this from interested witnesses, had just left Mr. Keats' office after losing all his money and asking for credit approval. Now, how is this possible? Unless he received money while he was with Mr. Keats. Very interesting, and so are you. Oh? Earlier this evening, you told me to leave the cause alone. Now you're feeding me plenty. Simply explained. Earlier, you were convinced that you were thinking of your future, alone. And what makes you think that's changed? Something I hope Mr. Keat didn't see. I noticed the slightest smudge of lipstick at the corner of your mouth. A very dangerous commodity, lipstick. Come in. Still up, Chris? Yes. Yeah. Is anything wrong? No, I just didn't feel tired. You've been crying. <sighs> Women always cry on their birthdays, didn't you know? Well, in that case, I'll see that your next birthday is less of an event. I thought going out might be a change for you. I know you haven't had much excitement lately. I didn't mean to provide quite so much of it. What do you mean by that remark? The birthday, a diamond bracelet, and a fight all in one evening. By the way, where is your bracelet? How casually you treat it, Chris. Do you know there's some men who would kill for this bracelet? There's some who would kill for the things it represents. I think you should be more careful in the future. Justin, stop treating me like a wife. You're not my husband yet. Good night. Charlie. Morning, Justin. Hello, Eddie. See the morning papers? No. The one about a man called Han Fai? Doesn't surprise me. Violent death of one sort or another seems indigenous to Macau these days. I wonder if it surprised Han Fai. I don't quite know what you mean. It's not important. It sounds as if there's a storm brewing.
Eddie. I know it's late. Chris, what's wrong? What's happened? Everything, Eddie, don't you know? I didn't want to come here. I tried hard not to. Look at you. You're all soaked. You left well enough alone. Why did you have to come back into my life? I tried hard too, Chris. But I guess there's nothing either one of us can do about it. What are we going to do, Eddie? Cash it for him. Sam, get a car. We'll be leaving soon. Come on back. I'm back. asked me before why I came back into your life. I came to Macau to take you back to the States. Payment on demand of Barney Pendleton. Is this a joke, Eddie? Yes, on Barney. Because the moment I saw you, I knew that wasn't the reason I'd come. Did he tell you what he wanted with me? Yes. He and Danny own some Las Vegas property together. Danny's will left half to you, and Barney wants to buy it. But the deal's so involved, you'd have to be there. Eddie. Barney isn't worried about any property. He's worried about 20 pages of testimony that could put him behind bars for life. What testimony? What I know about his and Danny's business transactions. I put it all down on paper after they tried to kill me, and... Put it in the safety deposit box. If anything happens to me, the vault will be open in the presence of a federal officer. That's why Barney wants me back. To get that testimony if he can. What a first class sucker they must have taken me. We've got a lot stacked up against us. But everything's out in the open now. We're, we're starting fresh and even like before. That before was such a long time ago. Oh, we'll make it up. Every minute of it. Oh, we just pack up and leave right now, this minute. It's not that easy. But we'll find a way, Chris. I promise you that. Keith having breakfast? Mr. Keith, he leave very early. Thank you, Willie. Six 
three, four, please. Hello, Eddie? Chris, where are you phoning from? From my room. Eddie Justin's gone. He, he left my plane this morning. Are you sure? I'm positive. Oh, Eddie, this may be our only chance. He knows I was with you last night. He, he was waiting in the car. Oh, Eddie, I'm afraid. Listen, Chris, don't get panicky. You'll have to stick close to the house under any condition. Oh, where's your passport? Justin has it. I'll stop making other arrangements. I'll call you just as soon as I make some headway. Be careful around Willie. Don't show any signs. I won't. Goodbye, Chris. Goodbye, Eddie. Uh, 739, please. Airport, maintenance. Flight information? Yes. Uh, I'd like to get in touch with a Mr. Justin Keat. Can you tell me if his plane has already left? Yes, sir. A few minutes ago. It has. Thank you. I tried to phone you at your hotel. What are you doing here at this time of the day? Well, I thought I'd come in early to rehearse some new music. My repertoire is getting positively monotonous. Owen? How good of a friend are you? That depends on how you evaluate the quality of friendship. I wouldn't lend you money because borrowing destroys friendship. But I would consider it a privilege if he would let me help you get her out of Macau. Then you know? If our friendship, which for your sake I hope will soon be terminated, were to continue, you will discover there is very little about Macau that I do not know. How do I do it, Alan? Transportation, papers? We don't care where we go. If at four o'clock this afternoon, you will go to the Rua Casa Drua Cadrao. You will find a tailor shop owned by my good friend, Choi Tat. He's an excellent tailor with documents as well as cloth. Everything will be arranged. Alan, I don't know how to thank. This is no time for thanks. You'd only flounder into speechlessness, but it would be wise to be cautious. You might be followed. Now go home, my friend, and spend the day with your dreams. it very much. Finest Canton silk. Very rare. Ellen is a very good friend. Everything necessary for the trip is in here, including instruction to place and friends, should you need help on the way. Most important, your passport and the ladies. Thanks. I send you a bill. Goodbye, Mr. Darrell. Goodbye. Good luck. Operator 697. Hello, Chris. Can you talk? It's all set. We leave tomorrow at 1. First by junk, then seaplane to Bombay, and then from there, Australia by boat. Oh, any place, Eddie. Any place in the world. Just so it's away from here. We'll meet at my place at 11. Tell Willie you're going shopping and don't bring anything with you except what you're wearing. I'm in his office. I better get downstairs. Good night, darling. Remember, 11 sharp. Good night. Willie. Yes, Miss Lawrence. I'm uh, I'm going shopping for a while this afternoon, so don't bother to fix lunch for me. Thank you, Miss Lawrence. Eddie, you look as though you'd seen a ghost. I thought you were away. 
Now, how did you know that? I told no one I was leaving Macau. I just thought you were. I didn't see you at the club last night. I approve much more of your manners at the club. Aren't you going to invite us in? Oh, sure. As a matter of fact, I have been away. Just returned. Sooner than I expected. I called Chris, but she wasn't at home. I thought you might know where she is. Look, Justin, if you've got something on your mind, let's get it off, huh? I'd much rather have a drink, if you don't mind. Just remember, I haven't any soda. It won't take but a minute to get some. Plain water will do nicely. No trouble. I prefer plain water. service can cover a lot of third-rate liquor. <laughs> Sam? Cheers. I think somebody knocked. It's probably the guy from down the hall. Real pest. Talks my ear off. Sam, be a good fellow and get rid of the pest. Around. Never mind. I'll do it myself. How's the boy, Eddie? Oh, I didn't know you had visitors. How are you? My name's Chalma, Cliff Chalma. Look, I hate to bust up the party, kid, but it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> what a guy. You make a date for 11, you're lucky if you see him at 12. Got a memory like a corpse. Forgot all about it. Do we still have time? Yeah, if you got to move on. I hate to run out on you. Forget like it. That. Where are you going? Oh, didn't Eddie tell you we got a big stack on a sixth at Happy Valley? No, I'm not a racing man myself. And I never thought of asking Eddie about a gamble like that. Well, we'll move along. Have a good day, Eddie. Face is familiar. I mean, I seen you around the Lisbon Club. I've been there. I figured it might get a little crowded. We all arrived at the same time. First Keith, then me, then a dame. So I told the lady you had company. She's tucked away in a room downstairs. I don't get it. Not at all. Maybe this will clear it up. <laughs> Sit down. The idea was to take her back to the States, not to Australia. I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, Buster, maybe we can't touch the dame, but you're not so immune, you know what I mean? Pendleton has a thing about being crossed. Makes him real peevish. He's got 30 grand tied up in you. Now you get what I'm driving at? I'm beginning to get the whole picture. this much for Barney Pendleton. He at least picked a tail with some brains and imagination. Don't romance me, Darrow. I'm married. You didn't let me finish. I said you were smart, but you know Phi Beta Kappa. Took a lot of trouble to set this dame up. Well, now she's right, and I don't want you around messing things up. She'll go anywhere I say, anywhere, but back to the States. Anywhere don't pay off. This girl's no fool, Charmer. She knew Barney wanted her, and she knew why. So what are you proving? So I had to find a way to win her over, gain her confidence. Well, I did it. With a confession that brought tears to her eyes, I told her why I was here. This I'm not interested in. All I know is you got visas for all the wrong places in the name of a boat that sails for Australia. Look, once I get her out of here, she'll follow me to the moon on a bike. But in the meantime, suppose she decides to check me out and find there's no boat for Australia. Then she knows I've been giving her a line and then we're dead. Okay, so now you're in Bombay, now what? Now I tell her something went wrong, that the Elgin isn't sailing, the skipper got cold feet, anything. But I tell her there's another ship, the, the Dolphin, a crummy little tub. I made a deal with the captain. 
Only we have to board her 20 minutes before she sails, at night, when no one's around to ask any questions. Catch? Keep talking. Then I take Chris down to the stateroom and I keep her there. By the time she finds out we're headed for the States, we're two days out at sea. What is she gonna do? Jump overboard? I don't know. It still smells like soft-boiled fish. It's that kind of a job and it's the only way it'll work. Of course, if you've got a better notion. No, I'll let you work yours out. Only remember, I'll be watching. Come on, let's go talk to her. Do it over, Brian. Please hurry. Chris, they must have found her. Not unless she wandered out of here. <laughs> Number 12, Rua Nova Guia. Is Miss Lawrence in? No, she go away. Well, didn't she come back? Oh, yes, yeah, she come back. Go away again with Mr. Keith. Where'd they go? They go to boat. They come back tonight. Did they say where they were going? Oh, no. Very nice day. Maybe they go only for a ride. Yeah, it's a great day, all right. Sam. What's the matter with you? Where's Keith? He's out. I can see he's out. Where is he? Well, right now I'd say he's sneaking up on a short honeymoon. He and that Lawrence dame, I mean, Miss Lawrence, are getting married in Hong Kong this afternoon. Eddie, what's the matter? Don't you believe in marriage? Put her on the wraps, Justin. Beauty like that was meant to be shared. Would I put the Mona Lisa on the wraps if I owned it? No, as a matter of fact, I rather enjoy showing Chris off. <laughs> really, Justin? She's your wife, not some painting you've added to your collection. <laughs> Excuse me. Here we I'm a brother. Oh, of course not, old man. Wonderful girl, your sister. Well, look who's here. What a pity you weren't invited. Every time I called on the phone, they said you were out, so I had to do it this way. I gotta talk to you, Chris. Come on. I'm not going any place with you. So help me, Chris, you don't come with me, I'll break up the place. This is far enough, isn't it? Why did you do it, Chris? You were going to talk. Well, go ahead. Start with the story about the girl who'd follow you to the moon on a bicycle. Or maybe you'd prefer the story about the girl who had to jump off a ship in mid-ocean. Chris, no. You've got to listen to me. Pendleton had a tail on me, and I didn't know it. He found out about our plans for Australia. I had to feed him a lie. Oh, you lied prettier when you were setting me up. Well, I'm set up now where you can't touch me. Chris, you've got to believe me. I had to convince this charmer that I wasn't crossing Barney. That's what you heard. And I'm sure he's convinced, like I am. Okay. I guess I haven't got the right to ask you to believe me. And it's one of those things I couldn't prove. But I feel sorry for you, Chris. Because you're going to wonder about this for a long, long time.
was a very foolish thing to do. She's his wife now. Yes, I know. To take his wife like that, in the midst of his friends, was worse than striking him. I'm afraid you've declared open war. That's all right with me. He's a very dangerous man. I know he is. But I've got a few things working for me. Maybe enough to link him with the illegal traffic the papers have hinted at. You overestimate yourself. Maybe. But you know as well as I that Hamfi that got knocked over that night, he didn't get money from Keith as a gift. He sold him something. Do you think that he would hesitate for one instant to use Miss Lawrence to stop you? No, my friend. He has the strongest weapon of all. Your love for her. Threaten her and you'll do anything he asks. But there's got to be a way to stop him. Kill him then, my friend. And immediately turn yourself over to the police. For safety. That way you can at least enjoy your victory until you are executed. Don't be surprised if I give it a try. You better not be seen with me anymore. Good night. You should do something about the crummy locks they got on these doors. This ship you were telling me about, the Dolphin? I've been checking, and there ain't none you could have made a deal for. How can you check it? You can't even spell it. Look, Darrow, don't get cute. Now, you look, Charmer. The show's over. She married Keith. What are you giving me now? It's straight. I didn't believe it either till they came back from Hong Kong. I thought you had this sewed up. I did. Until she heard us talking in here. Okay, so she's married. Now what? Barney will have to figure a new angle. There's nothing more I can do. And I'm sick of the whole mess. Where are you going? Get a cable off to Barney. Find out how to handle this. alone without me. But I tell you, I don't enjoy being made a fool of. I don't either. I didn't ask him to come. You're in love with him, aren't you? I hate him. Don't lie to me. About a man who'd traveled 6,000 miles to take me back to Barney Pendleton. Now ask me if I love him. Being married for revenge is no more flattering than being made a fool. I have a few plans for this man you hate. Justin. Couldn't figure out a better wedding present for you, Mac. Now, wait a minute. You're Eddie Darrow's friend. What do you want? Your widow has to go back to the States. This was supposed to go so nobody got hurt, and I'm sorry they have to do this, but you know how these things go. Eddie decides to get selfish and take her with him to Australia for himself. And then you get into the act. This proves you should never trust people, not even yourself. Drop it in front of you. Turn around. Sam? Over here. Go to the club and pick up Leon. I want you to get rid of Darrow. I didn't want you to be alarmed, dear. Someone tried to break in. I think it'll be better if we leave the house until after the police have been here. All right, I'll 
We've got to get out of here. We? Oui? The man I heard you talking to. He's dead. Justin killed him. Chalmers? Yes, he came to the house to kill Justin. Somehow Sam got behind him and made him drop the gun. When he turned around, Justin shot him. I heard Justin tell Sam to get Leon. He's using Chalmers as an excuse to have you killed. Well, they haven't got us yet. We'll have to take our chance. Betty, you don't understand. It isn't just Sam and Leon. It's Justin. He'll stop at nothing. Chris. Are you there? You'll have to leave. Sam and Leon. Miss Lawrence. Then you know. Yes. Alan, make him understand that we must leave. He wants to stay. There's no sense running away. You'll never beat him in Macau. Listen, my friend. At times, there's a thin line between courage and stupidity. This is one of those times. What would you gain here? To save your face and lose your life? What about her? Haven't you caused her enough unhappiness? You have the choice between trying to live by taking her away or certainly dying so that Mr. Keith can have her again. That would be pleasant for her, wouldn't it? You're always right, Alan. We have no time. Sam and Leon are on the way from the club. we could find. Ship's departures. My boats. It's the only way they could get out of here. Come on, we'll get down to the docks and pick up Leon on the way. All right, Alan, where to? Mr. Keats' boat first. Then I hope Kowloon. But Alan, he'll find us in Kowloon. What about that plane to Bombay? What about Australia? That plan was for escape. I had hoped that now you'd prefer victory. What are you driving at? Leave the man to Macau. Since the shooting the night you arrived, the police have learned much more than he realizes. If you're smart, you can wreck his organization where the worst damage is done, in your own country. You sure picked the right people, Alan. If we go back to the States, we're in as big a jam as we are here. Eddie, if we get out of this, I'm through running. I want us to go home where we belong. All right, Chris. We'll get everything cleared up with Barney once and for all. All right, Alan, what's the plan? Kowloon, the Prince of Wales Dock, Berth 12. There's a ship, the SS Malabar, bound for San Francisco. It will leave tomorrow. It's still loading, so except for a guard, the crew is ashore. Stow away on it. And when you're at sea, announce yourself to the first officer. He's a friend of mine. You seem to have friends in all the right places. What's this? A list of names and addresses. The men and women who received Mr. Keats' contraband in all the port cities of America. Perhaps with it, you too can win some friends in the right places. You play good piano, Alan. And I'm trying to figure out what you really are. I thought you knew. Quickly, my 
friends. Good luck. So long. See the captain. Sorry, nobody's a lot aboard. <clears throat> A match wouldn't be seen. A match? This grain dust is worse than dynamite.
my wife now, Eddie. Come on, Chris. left after the explosion, but we fished this bag out of the wreckage. Christine Lawrence Maynard, 3210 South Elm, Philadelphia. In the States. Too bad. Wonder what she was doing on a freighter like that. Well, we better send it over to the American consulate. They'll have to cable her family, you know. Mm-hmm. We'll do it right away. Issue a warrant for Barney Pendleton. That's right. I've got enough to put him and his syndicate away for a thousand years. I'll be down and get it. I want to pick this monkey up personally. What are you thinking about? How nice it'd be if we could just stop the clock on this ship. Spend the rest of our lives right here. We've got a few more weeks. A few weeks. Maybe our whole lifetime, Eddie. The closer we get, the more frightened I am. I don't know. Maybe it's the moonlight affecting me. But I've got a gambler's hunch. The kind you go broke on or get rich quick. I've got a feeling everything is going to turn out all right. Your hunch is good enough for me, darling. 